Hey class, welcome back. We're now into week three where we're going to be talking about nature's design principles. So we're in um, right now in lesson 3.1 and we're going to start with just a, a basic introduction to nature's design principles. So remember earlier when we were talking about biomimetic design, we were talking about biomimetic design in the context of sustainable design and we asked the question, you know, what are we aiming for when we're doing sustainable design? And what we ended up with was biomimetic design is really about creating conditions that are conducive to life on Earth. Remember talking about that? So that's really the ultimate goal of sustainable design. So humans and all other living things on Earth can live compatibly on the conditions that we have here on Earth. So as you recall, the bigger goal of biomimetic design is to realign ourselves, humans, with nature. It could be our materials, our processes, our systems, and of course our spirit, if you remember that. So that's the goal of biomimetic design. So that begs the question, and we'll keep coming back to our little friend here, um, how do we realign with nature? What, what do we mean by that, and how in heck do we do that as sustainable designers? Well, we realign by nature by following nature's rules for sustainability when we design. It's really as simple as that. And this, this graphic that I'm using for the, you saw on the cover of week three and on the border here, this is a picture, um, I found it on um, Wired's, one of Wired's uh, magazine's uh, best lists, if you've seen that. And these are all their best list of animals that have gone extinct. And which is kind of a sad sort of a list. Um, and, and if you're curious, you can go look it up there. Um, the idea is that virtually all living things that have all species that have ever lived on Earth have gone extinct. 99.9% of all species that have ever lived on Earth are now extinct. So what that says is nature has some pretty harsh rules for sustainability. And humans haven't been here very long and right now our trajectory is not one of sustainability. We're not following nature's rules when we design. So right now we're not in a very good trajectory and there's no reason why we can't join the rest of these guys on, on the list, although that list won't exist because we won't be there to make it. Okay, so we can realign with nature by turning nature's principles into design principles. And you've already seen some examples of biomimicry, right? So some of you may have seen the Mercedes-Benz car that emulated the boxfish, or the London RE Tower, tower the glass gherkin that emulated the Venus, um, I think it's called flower basket, it's a, it's a sea sponge. Um, We'll also learn, and we won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but we can, in addition to applying um, nature's principles um, to the design of things, we can apply them to business, organizational structures, and principles. All right, so that begs the next question. Why does nature need principles at all? Doesn't it just live? Well, as we learned earlier, because organisms have to do all th these things in order to be considered alive and not either dead or inanimate, um, organisms have to undergo metabolism, maintain homeostasis, um, possess a capacity to grow, re be able to respond to stimuli, be able to reproduce, be able to adapt to their environments in successive generations. So they, they have to do this in order to be alive and they have to do it under these conditions. We all live, us and all the other 30 million, I think, different species there are out there, we don't really know. Um, we all have to follow those, you know, do those things under these conditions. Earth is water-based, right? We talked about that earlier. It's in a state of dynamic non-equilibrium. In other words, things are always changing and not in a predictable way. And there are, of course, limits and boundaries. So when you're looking at that with a designer's eye, or design thinking, you can think of these as Earth's operating conditions. So when you design something, you have to understand well, what are the operating conditions um, that I have to design for. You have to design for this. That's part of nature's rules. Okay, so what are nature's principles? Well, we've been talking about nature's design principles because I want to be a little bit more broad than what you find um, with strictly with biomimicry or what you might find with, if some of you know about biomimicry 3.8. Um, 
but I want to talk about life's principles as a as a um, primarily for the purposes of this course. But we'll dip into um, nature's principles in a minute. So the idea is that life, in one form or another, has managed to sustain itself on Earth for the past 3.85 billion years, and that's where biomimicry 3.8 comes from. So when we use the word life, and I highlighted that in green there, um, what we mean is some sort of living thing. Okay, so um, things, like we said, 99.9% .9 of species have ever lived, so very few species on Earth today were alive 3.85 billion years ago. There were some, and I got to see them, and it's really cool. Um, different story. But what that means is 3.85 billion years of trial and error, 3.5 billion years of natural selection, 3.85 billion years of rigorous testing that resulted in that 99.9% .9 failure rate. So nature has really, really high quality control standards, really high standards for sustainability. What this also tells us is that there must be some incredibly powerful strategies um, for sustainability embedded in those 30 million species that are on Earth today, which is the 0.1% that have survived. So if we can identify those strategies, remember those functions, and understand, even more importantly, the underlying principles, and then apply those principles to our designs, then we should be able to come up with innovative, sustainable design solutions. And that's really what biomimetic design in the context of sustainable design is all about. So scientists, biologists, have been working for many, many years trying to identify you know, how nature works, unlock nature's secrets of survival, unravel the mysteries of life. Now the Biomimicry Guild and, and Institute, along with its many partners and really special people, have um, kind of studied, compiled, and distilled um, what's out there, particularly in the popular press, um, into what we call life's principles. So biomimicry's life's principles are really intended to represent nature's strategies for sustainability. So how life has stained on, sustained on Earth for 3.85 billion years. So life's principles have been organized into, um, into this, um, what we're calling life's principles butterfly. And um, I will uh, admit right now here for transparency that I helped, um, I did not create the original Life's Principles list, but I, when I worked for the Biomimicry Institute, I helped create it into this more organized fashion of, of Life's Principles. So I'm going to refer to this even though there's a more, um, a, a newer version I'll show you in a second, but um, I don't find those as good, especially for learning purposes. So we're going to stick with, with this one. So this is how, this is what Life's Principles looks like. And um, if you haven't already gotten one, um, you've got a, a, a PDF of this. For clarity, and then for those of you who are more linear thinkers, um, um, here, here's the list. So Life's Principles have two major headings. One is Life Adapts and Evolves. And the other one is Life Creates Conditions Conducive to Life. And within each of those, we've got um, We've got um, sub principles, and, uh, and we'll go into those in details. One of the keys about being a principle, and the reason why we call it, is that it's always true. So every living thing on Earth always exhibits all of life's principles. Some of them are more obvious than others in certain organisms, in certain systems. Um, some are much more important than others, but all of them have to exhibit all of life's principles. That's what we call a principle. Things that are like um, um, what you looked into last week, so functions and strategies, those are beyond principles. So how a given organism expresses these principles is its strategy, and, and that's not universal, although we do see patterns, and you've been seeing those. So to be a principle, all organisms all the time have to exhibit it. So life's principles, um, if you look at the sheet, um, has this thing, operating conditions at the top, okay? So we talked about that already that those operating conditions on earth and then on the one side you have life creates conditions conducive to to life and all of these principles feed into that and on the other side you have life adapts and evolves and all the principles on this side of the butterfly feed into that and you have to have another the key is, is that 
both of these have to be there. A butterfly can't fly without both wings, right? So that's part of the idea of, of using the butterfly. And also, the key is that these, all the strategies on this side feed into life adapts and evolves. All the strategies on this side, I'm sorry, not strategies, principles, feed into this, and they both are there in order to live, remember what it means to live, um, under these operating conditions. And we're going to go into those in detail in a minute. Okay, so if you did look into the Biomimicry 3.8 website, um, you'll find life's principles in this form. And again, go ahead and explore those. Um, I'm, I don't, those don't resonate so well with me, and I think, and so for the purpose of this class, we're going to use a butterfly, but feel free to explore that, and maybe you can um, do your own compare and contrast. So that's the basis to life's principles. Where we end up using them, you'll find out um, next week, I think it is next week, um, when you start to get into the design spirals. And so we'll, um, this is an older version of the design spiral too, but, and there's a couple of them, but there's a whole process you go to, go through in the design spiral, and the last of uh, the spiral steps is evaluate. So we can use life's principles to evaluate our designs against nature's rules for sustainability. So that's where we're going to be using it. Okay, so we're going to keep this one short, um, and you're going to have a set of three videos to introduce yourself to um, Life's Principles, this one, and then the next one will be on how and why nature adapts and evolves, and then after that we'll have another short one on how and why nature or life creates conditions conducive to life. Okay, all right, we'll see you in the next video.